to in a minute. Okay. I want but to give you an opportunity to ask any questions that you might have thought of at lunch. Get out of this slide if I can. Um, and remind you that using the correct words when we talk about the, this stuff is really, really important. So just like off the top of my head, I wrote down a bunch of things that I wanted you to learn today. There can be a difference between the high three and the last three. Even though a lot of people talk about their last three, and yes, that's normally what we use, if your three highest consecutive years weren't in the last three years, that's absolutely okay. I wanted you to know that there's a difference between base and basic. So you asked when you came in, are you lying to me about the fact that we get to include our locality? Yeah. No. Why have we always heard that locality isn't included? Because we're using the wrong word because we're calling it base when in fact the regulation calls it basic and there's a big difference. Remember that a penalty is a subtraction from your annuity. A penalty does not mean that you've decided that you're leaving under 62 and therefore you're only getting 1% instead of the 1.1%. That was a personal choice that you made, right? It's not a penalty. Somebody asked me, for every year that I work, am I adding 1% to my retirement? Yes, at a minimum. We didn't specifically talk about that, but that's because I showed you your math problem, right? The formula is 1% or 1.1, depending on how long you've worked and how old you are, and that's multiplied by your high three, which is multiplied by your creditable length of service. Every year you work, there's another one on that top line. So you're adding 1% or 1.1% for every single year that you work. Eligibility is different than computation. Eligibility, you're old enough, you work long enough to be able to retire. The computation is the retirement amount. I wanted to return to that because I wanna make sure that I clarify something for you. We were talking about the 1.1% 1 .1 which I get only if I stay working until I'm 62 and I have 20 years in. Sick leave can get me to the 1.1. I told you that sick leave doesn't count for eligibility and that's absolutely true. But if I'm eligible, for example, let's say I'm 62. If I'm 62, I can retire with as little as five years of creditable service, right? I'm eligible. Let's say I'm 62 and I've got 19 years in, I'm eligible. If I also have a year of sick leave, 19 plus one is 20. I will get the 1.1. I don't have to work the full 20 to get the 1.1. I have to have 20 years of creditable service to get the 1.1. So I did wanna clarify that for you because I didn't talk about that this morning. And then leave earned versus leave paid. This, there's a lot of rumors out there. There's a lot of myths. There's a lot of misunderstandings. Two that I've heard very recently. Number one, I had a gentleman emailed me this morning before class. He was just approved for a disability retirement from the Office of Personnel Management. And he said, Debbie, I read somewhere that because I'm going on a disability, the government will keep paying into my TSP. No, that's not happening. Somebody just asked me, if I leave, is the government going to give me annual leave through the end of the year and pay me for all of what I would have earned if I kept working? No, <coughs> the government is not giving you anything for free. So if you hear something like those two things, again, they're out there. If you hear something like that, that seem too good to be true, they are too good to be true. When I was talking about paying you for excess leave, I was talking about leave that you had actually earned. You started with 240, you earned eight hours per pay period, you actually had 440 hours on the books when you went out the gate, yes, we'll pay you for all of that. But are we gonna say over this next year, here's what you would have earned, we're gonna pay you for it? No. Questions or clarifications from you <coughs> over things that you might have thought of at lunch? Yes? I just come up with a question. If you have use or lose leave, how does anybody accumulate 440 hours of leave? How does that even happen? Use or lose is in January. 
So the way that that happens is that I start in January with my 240, but I earned 200, or for this year, 208, as I went through the year. Now, if I'm still working come January, they're gonna cut me back to 240. But if I leave in December, before that happens, that's how I get paid for the excess. 